It is a genuine serious question at this point in UK politics. How long is the the government going to pretend that Brexit is is working? Either whether this continues to be a Conservative government or whether we shift to a, a, a Labour, probably the way things are looking, a Labour coalition government, probably with all of Dems at this point. And the Conservatives, data is just going to compel them to, to give in. The moderates, who are were, again, the ones who support being in the European Union, they were the ones that are, again, pro-rejoin and, and very, very much remain, just like they did in the uh, 1970s in the original case that joined them and compelled them to go for joining in the first place, it was businesses. We are just seen very recently, the Chamber of Commerce of, the, of Britain has basically said about 71% of businesses that they are looking after, when asked, has Brexit damaged your business? They said yes. And a lot of those uh, yeses were um, permanently. So we cannot even continue on this, uh, especially for the Conservatives. And if we get a Labour like coalition, even if we, we've got Kima Star say, oh, well, we'll make Brexit better. Well, what do they actually mean by that? Do you mean a, a closer alignment with Europe? Do you mean rejoining like the customs union, maybe, or, or customs union and single market? What does what does that actually mean? Because to be honest, you can't make anything better out of what we currently have now. So this is a very up in the air question. And I think just sheer weight of evidence. And I think politicians actually going to their, <laughs> their voting base and saying, look, Brexit really hasn't worked and being honest with them is going to be a big step forward and I think it's going to be very very brave for the first uh, lot of MPs who actually start to do that it's certainly not going to lose them any elections but it's certainly not going to win them any popularity contests either so let's go diving into this uh, question and find out more about this so let's uh, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So on with this. Whoop. So this comes from The Guardian with the title of How Much Longer Do We Have to Pretend That Brexit Might Work? My Irish mother taught me, always try to see the good in people. But it has to be admitted that any attempt to see the good in Alexander Boris Johnson would, in another of her favourite sayings, try the patience of job. It's already a common commonplace in this country and in around the civilised world that our Prime Minister is a charlatan on an industrial scale. John Major knew what he was on about when declaring, as Prime Minister himself, that Johnson should not even be allowed to, to fight a parliamentary seat. The late Lord Carrington even resigned as Foreign Secretary on principle over the fiasco that led to the Falklands War back in 1982, the war that generally was thought to have saved Margaret Thatcher's skin after she achieved the very dubious distinction of being the most unpopular Prime Minister since the Second World War. Many years later, Carrington even found himself listening to some young uh, foggery Tories uh, discussing the case for making Johnson Prime Minister, and there was a pause... Anyway, uh, said the good Lord, he won't do. And of course, there are always some Johnson loyalists who say that he should just do the decent thing and resign as an honourably as he can in the circumstances. But most witnesses to this very sorry spectacle of his premiership think that he can uh, he couldn't spot a decent thing, even if it was his favourite horse running at the 3.30 at Newmarket. And of course, I reminded of the Donsky shot, uh, a bad business that things go badly uh, when uh, the general whose driver has disappeared turns down uh, turns down a, a lift from a colleague and heads off, heads off into the night with the unfortunate repercussions. It has been a bad business since Johnson, who, notwithstanding his irresponsibly reporting of fancy stories about Brussels, was in no doubt it would be uh, good for be a craze for the UK to leave the EU. But decided to put, of course, self-interest above the country in leading the very very mendacious Leave campaign. But here we are. And as Howard Macmillan once said, the question is, where do we go from here? 
Macmillan was again a prime minister when the British economy was lagging behind what was then the European economic community. And we tried forming a rival group, the European Free Trade Area, and seven nations as opposed to the six uh, to the six ECC. Of course, the joke that was uh, Europe was at sixes and sevens. It soon obviously became apparent that we didn't need uh, to link up with the ECC. Uh, oh, sorry, it soon became apparent that we needed to link up with the ECC. And of course, we applied twice, but were turned down by President de Gaulle and then finally joined in 1973. And now I have an awful feeling of deja vu. Labour leader Keir Starmer and his shadow secretary, uh, Rachel Reeves, talk about making Brexit work. And I can only hope that this is tactical stuff intended to try and appease the Red Wall voters who are really uh, protesting at the social consequences of several decades of industrial decline. And let's face it, the well-meant but very well disastrous Labour leadership of Jeremy Corbyn. It also looks as though the Labour, Labour's very defeated Remainers do envisage a return to the 1950s and early 60s to begin the process of rebuilding a relationship with the EU, a process whose logical outcome would be rejoining in the decades to come. But why wait? Why should Labour attach itself to the chemical, uh, uh, yeah, to the chimerical goal, of course, of making Brexit work? And of course, for the truth that dare not speak its name is that Brexit just doesn't work and never will. The experiment has been tried and has failed. And all this stuff about the opportunities of Brexit, there are none. Johnson may have packed his sordid cabinet with Brexiteers and time, uh, time servers, but the all-party public's account committee is beyond the reach of his solid hands. As the chair, Dame Meg Hellyer, was reported in saying the Financial Times, it is only a detectable impact of Brexit is increased costs, paperwork, and border delays. And of course, there was a classic moment on television just last week when a lorry driver held up at one of those dreadful queues on the Dover Road was asked, is it going to get any better? His, re his reply was to the point, not unless we go back into the EU. Now uh, I read uh, that suits Labour, while protesting against him all the way to Electoral Bank to see if Johnson will remain in office. But to paraphrase Carrington above, this simply won't do. The man has besmirched the office and the good name of this country. And one of the Brexit secretaries who failed to make Brexit work because it can't is my old friend David Davis. He was right to echo Cromwell and say to Johnson, in the name of God, go. Even if Johnson were to be scarcely uh, succeeded by, of course, another Brexiteer, there are no moral coherent grounds for acquiescing for this continuance in office. I cannot resist concluding with yet another quotation from the Roman poet Juvenal. Uh, Hovic volo sic eco sit pronam rasnel voratas, which says, I want this done, so I order it done. Let my wish repeat the single rational judgment. This epitomizes our very present Prime Minister's mentality while a nation suffers. So, this is indeed uh, the, the real question asked of how long do we just go on pretending that Brexit's worked, even uh, though for the Conservatives and even for the Labour Party. Um, again, it may very well be a, a good political ploy to say, well, just for the time being, we're going to make it work. Uh, again, just to appease you know the Red Wall voters, while again, trying to find that way back into them and say, well, look, Brexit was never going to work. And at the end of the day, this is always a Conservative project. It always was and always will be. So at the end of the day, Labour can always turn around and say Brexit never worked. It was never going to work because the Conservatives came up with it in the fantasy pie in the sky pipe dream. And that is indeed what we've been saying really since the beginning. And of course, the more and more we push that message, the more and more I think it starts to get home and starts to sink in. And I really do think um a lot of people are going to see that message start to sink in very, very quickly, especially as we see the European countries, especially their economies, start to really take off while ours just takes a complete nosedive or just stalls completely. So that's the unfortunate economic future of Britain, at least for the time being. So as always, thank you very much for watching and please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and our foundation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel. And of course, we'll see you all next time.